This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel.com. For all the best Photoshop and Lightroom tips, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to Facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. Hi everybody, Mike Hoffman here, and in this video we're continuing with part four of my series of lessons on using the pen tool in Photoshop. In the first video, we covered path fundamentals, and in the second video we used the pen tool to create some straight line paths. We use these paths as a selection, and then in the third video, we added more paths and more anchor points to create complex shapes and complex selections. If you're just joining us at this point, you may want to go back and watch the previous three videos in this series to make sure that you're up to speed with the topics that we're going to cover in this segment. In today's video, we're going to begin to tackle drawing curved path segments. This is the part that scares people when they first try to use the pen tool, but with the foundation of knowledge that we've built, you're ready to jump in and start creating curves. Remember from the previous video, and working on this star, that when we added anchor points with the pen tool, we got anchor points that had control handles, and the control handles gave us curved segments. We'll start by taking a close look at the control points and how they work. When I click on an anchor point to make it active, the control handles appear on either side of the anchor point. While the anchor point is active, we can actually click on either of the solid circles at the end of the control handles and move these handles around. When we do, several things happen. First, notice that as we change the angle of the control handle on one side of the anchor point, we get the opposite motion at the other end. It's like the control handles are connected and are forming a big lever or a seesaw. So when we pull up here, we're pulling down on the other side. And when we pull down here, we're pulling up on the other side. Second, notice that the path segment curves out towards the control points at the end of each handle trying to reach this control point, but never actually doing so. You can think of these control points as little magnets pulling the path segment into a curved shape. The farther away you move them, the farther the curved path bends, trying to reach those control points. If you drag the handle to make it longer, the path curves toward it way over here, making a long smooth arc from this anchor point. If you shorten the control handle, the path doesn't have to curve as far, and you get a shorter, sharper curve with a longer tapering segment afterwards. Moving these points around to sculpt the curvature of the path is the essence of drawing curved paths with the pen tool. Let's switch to this image and start drawing a new path with the pen tool itself. Here, we want to draw a path around this peach so that we can extract it from this image. If I was to click with the pen tool, as we saw in earlier videos, I would create corner points with straight line segments. We could assemble a ton of these and approximate the shape of the peach, or we could start with a segmented piece like this and then add extra anchor points and drag them into position. However, a better approach is just to draw a curve directly with the pen tool. I'm going to delete this path that we just created and we'll start over. I'll pick a spot here to start my path, but instead of just clicking, I'm going to click and drag. And I'm going to drag in the direction I want my path to go, but I'm dragging the control points that will pull the curve out from this first anchor point. When I release the mouse button, I have the point created and the control handles are in place, but I haven't drawn the first path segment yet. I'll pick a spot around the perimeter of the fruit and place the next anchor point here. Again, I'm going to click and then drag. And when I do, we get a path connecting the two anchor points as well as the next set of control handles. I'm dragging once again in the direction that I want the path to travel but it's the control handle pointing backwards that's governing the shape of the path. So this can be a bit tricky. The control point under the cursor is going to control the next path segment exiting from this new anchor point. We can see that as I click and create the next anchor point. 
Now one mistake people tend to make when they first used a pen tool is to try to control the previous segment when they're dragging the control handles out. When you do, you get this crazy effect. And if this happens, don't panic. Just drag the control handle around and head off once again in the direction that you want the path to take. When you do this, the path will straighten itself out. Once we've added a few more points here, we can work our way back around this fruit. And with enough points in place, we're ready to be back at the beginning and close the path. Remember, when we started drawing this path, we started with a smooth point with control handles. So closing this will automatically connect the curved path into the smooth anchor point. Now the location and shape of the path may not be exactly right when you close it. You can hold down the control key in Windows or the command key on a Mac to get the white arrow tool. Now we can go back and click the anchor point to make it active and adjust the control handles as appropriate. You may find yourself needing to reposition the anchor points and you may have to go back and forth a few times adjusting the control handles. Pulling on one side pushes on the other side, so it's a constant balancing act to get the curve into the position and shape that you want. This is something that comes with practice and with experience. Once we have the path in position, we can create a selection or create a mask just as we've seen in previous videos. In fact, here's a way that we can create a vector mask with the pen tool active and this path selected. I can simply click here in the toolbar at the top on the word mask and this will create a vector mask using the path that we've just drawn with the pen tool. This is the basic premise behind drawing with the pen tool in Photoshop. As we continue forward in this video series, we're going to learn how to use this technique in various applications to create the paths in the shapes that we need. In the next video in this series, we're going to look at a special kind of curve called a cusp, where two curves join together into a sharp corner. Once we've tackled that skill, we'll be ready to handle almost anything with the pen tool. I hope you'll join me next time as we continue to work with the pen tool in Photoshop. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of Photoshop, Lightroom, and photography tips, tricks, and information there. You can follow me on Twitter at mhoffman2001, and you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial.